Hello, it's me, Sean. And in this video, I've got the Atomos Shinobi 7. The reason this is called the Shinobi 7 is not because there have been seven Shinobis out there on the market. The reason this is called the Shinobi 7 is because it is a seven inch display external monitor for your cameras or a monitor for anything that has basically a HDMI out that can plug into this external monitor right here if that's what you wanted to use it for. But this is dedicated for cameras because of all the features that it has packed into it. Now it is a seven inch display, so if you're thinking about a lot of cinema cameras, DSLRs, mirrorless cameras, those cameras tend to not have very big monitors, unless you're obviously talking about the Blackmagic Ursa sort of line of cameras. And with that, you have a bunch of features like you've got You've got a two time zoom, four time zoom, so you can check your focus or to check any minor details in the background that you just wanna keep a closer eye on, just see what it looks like on screen. You also have things like false color, so you can check for your highlights and your shadows, make sure that as much is within scope or into the right ends of the kind of like the luma spectrum as you would like. You also have your waveforms and your histograms on there. So you, you can monitor, you know, your exposure and everything on the go very easily. And also if you're filming with say like anamorphic lenses, this also has an anamorphic squeeze feature built into it that you can use. So you can see what the end result of your shot is gonna be while you're shooting it. Let's come over to the inputs and the outputs of this device. So you can run it through your mains. It comes with a DC power cable in the box. So you can plug it into a mains power supply and run it that way. Or you can use the very standard, very common NPF batteries on the back. It takes two at the same time, which is really good. And you can run this thing off of one battery at a time as well. So you can hot swap on the go if you need to, battery wise, if one gets a little bit low and you need to just swap out, you can take one off, put the new battery on. You also have HDMI in and out, which is very useful, as well as SDI in and out on the other side of the battery compartment. Now, what is very um, interesting um, about that as well is that SDI is more of a secure line than HDMI because of the way that you twist it in there and it locks into place which means you have to be very kind of like purposefully wanting to remove the connection if you're wanting to do that. It can't just be yanked out like the HDMI can. Not to say that the HDMI at all is uh, like a flimsy connection. It's actually quite, it clicks in very nicely. But say like you're using a DSLR or a mirrorless camera that does not have an SDI output, but you're working on a job that requires for you to have one so that you can line in, chain up to a bunch of cameras or something like that, plug into say like a broadcast desk of some kind that only really uses um, SDI inputs and outputs and all that kind of thing. Then what you can do is use the Shinobi 7 as your solution for that. So you can HDMI in through your camera to the Shinobi and then use the SDI output from the Shinobi into whatever the SDI desk that you need to connect it up to. And also comparing it to the original Shinobi, which not only was it not seven inches, it was five inches. So a lot smaller in terms of screen size, but also the original Shinobi did not have um, SDI at all. It didn't have the SDI in or the SDI out, but also didn't have a HDMI out either. Plus it only took one battery at a time. So if you needed to keep it perpetually running on a kind of cableless basis, then you really did, yeah, you were in trouble basically. You would have to power it down, swap the battery, and then power it back up again. If say you've got clients around or a director who wants a constant view of what the director of photography is shooting, then if you say get the Shinobi 7, they have a very comfortably sized screen to spectate 
the shoot from, which is great. But not only that, but if you say get the, uh, the Hollyland HDMI transmitter set, so a wireless transmission from the camera to the Shinobi 7, then you're completely like free of having people huddled around you while you're shooting, which can be quite distracting at times. You do have an SD card slot on the side of the Shinobi 7. The Shinobi and the Shinobi 7, neither of the two record video at all. They are purely preview monitors, external monitors. They don't do any form of recording at all. What the SD card slot is for, it's for bringing in your firmware updates, as well as if you wanted to bring in your own lookup tables, then you can do that and you can import them through this SD card slot and then use those on the Shinobi 7, which is really handy if you've got your own personal LUTs that you want to use out on a shoot day. So you can see exactly the look that you are going to be aiming for in the edit. The original Shinobi, the Shinobi 5, being a five inch monitor, you kind of wonder, well, why would I go for a Ninja 5 over the Shinobi? The Ninja 5 can record, but not only record, but it can also record ProRes RAW. Well, the difference was you don't have the recording in the Shinobi 5, therefore you're saving a lot of money. The, the Shinobi was a lot cheaper. The Shinobi 7, now the main difference, obviously bigger screen, as I've said numerous times, but also, the Shinobi and the Ninja 5, they had 1000 nits of screen brightness going on. Both of them did, which is really good, very clear. The Shinobi 7 has 2200 nits of brightness. Now I did take the uh, Shinobi 7 out the other day and it was a very sunny day as well, which is perfect because it gave me the opportunity to basically test out that 2200 nits brightness just to see how comfortable that was out when it's competing against very contrasty weather conditions um, and I've got to say that it was better than what I've experienced in the past with uh, with monitors that are not as bright but even with that being said it's not perfect because you are literally competing the brightness of this monitor with the power of the Sun okay I mean I don't think you can like compare those brightnesses close together really at all. I think you're still going to want some sort of a hood for it to block reflections off the monitor just to give you a better chance. Maybe get some sort of like a matte cover for it so that it naturally doesn't reflect. When you're taking it out, there's still gonna be those compromises where you're gonna to wanna to like put a blanket over it or something. But the truth is, is that with that 2200 nits, it is a lot more comfortable. And if you do have, say, your producer, director and your client all huddled around this monitor to see what the director of photography is doing, this is still a very good option for that because of the size and also because it is very bright. Using a small rig ball head attachment on the cold shoe of my camera here, I can literally like uh, release this from the tripod and go around and start filming. It's not heavy. By the way, it's not heavy at all. It's as heavy as the Ninja 5, just because of the size. Obviously, depending on which batteries you put on it, I've got some very uh, chunky ones on here. That will obviously affect the weight as well. But yeah, really like uh, lovely size screen. Like something that I found earlier in my career is that when I was looking at these smaller monitors that are on the backs of our cameras and everything, it did sometimes give me the wrong impression of what sort of video image I was capturing, what sort of composition that I had. Because the screen is so small, um, I was overcompensating with how close I would have to get to things. So having a bigger monitor like this gives you a more true impression of what it is that you're going to be seeing on your television or your PC monitor. Something else that is very interesting about the Shinobi 7 as well is the fact that not only is it a touchscreen monitor for all of the settings that the Shinobi itself possesses, but it also has a remote out, which if you get the correct cable, um, I think it's USB-C into the Z camera, then the Shinobi 7 can act as the Z cam's controller, essentially, a touchscreen controller, which is really exciting because if you need a big monitor with 2200 nits in it for your Z cam, then the Shinobi 7 has you covered.
But on top of that, it also paves the way for a future whereby we might be seeing more compatibility um, like maybe with the Shinobi 7 as well, with a few firmware updates from camera to Shinobi 7 in the future, whereby say like you plug in your, your Black Magic, which is all touchscreen as well, into the Shinobi 7, and all of a sudden you're controlling your Black Magic with the Shinobi 7, because obviously you've got the, the limit of where you can articulate your monitor for the Black Magic pocket cinema cameras and all that. Um, this will not have that problem because I can literally just like, if I just undo the ball head, I can literally spin it around and reposition it into whatever sort of, uh, you know, position that I would like to at a moment's notice, really. And if this was like a touchscreen controller for the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera as well, then that would be like a game changer, really, for that brand of camera. And if that was then compatible with other mirrorless cameras with touchscreen functionality like the A7S's or, or the GH5's, then yeah, like usability and sort of the, the workflow on set of just like getting everything done and in the can and just having bigger monitors to work with in general. Um, yeah, I mean, that would be pretty, um, pretty something. Now, that's all I've got to say on the Shinobi 7 today. Um, if you want to read up about it, read about all the specs, kind of figure out how this could be useful to you, then there is a link in the description to our store page for the Shinobi 7 where you can find all that information. But of course, if you've got any questions, then do feel free to either send us an email or give us a call, speak to our expert staff, or alternatively, you can leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can with all the information that you could need. Now, we're making content on this channel all the time about all kinds of gear and kind of like uh, filmmaking practices and masterclasses and all that kind of stuff. So if any of that takes your fancy, then do consider subscribing to the channel and ringing that notification bell so you don't miss out on anything. But as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.